Okay, so let's continue with the activity 2.2. We completed in the previous video the inverting amplifier. Let's move on now to the non-inverting amplifier. Okay, so let's start with the skeleton. So, go through here. So in this case, it's a non-inverting amplifier, so the input is in a non-inverting in the positive terminal the input and the, of course we have negative feedback so there's a pathway back from the output to the negative voltage terminal this is V output this is, ground. This is our feedback resistor so this is the topology of the circuit and we are asked to find an expression for the output voltage, for the gain, um, the region of linear operation, the input impedance, and the output impedance. So if you recall, we have a two-step process to do analysis of any operational amplifier circuit. The first step is to determine of the two nodes, the VP and VN, which one is more complex. So in this case, which one is more complex, this one or this one? Well, clearly the VN is more complex. Okay, this is VN and this is VP. And we apply nodal analysis at that node, basically step one, Kirchhoff current law. Sum of the currents, leave it the no equals to zero. So what are the currents? So one current is going down here, and that's the current is a different in voltage over the resistance. So Vn, the voltage right here, minus V0, which is ground, divided by Ri minus zero divided by Ri plus we have another current going here right and the expression will be Vn minus V output divided by Rf and then we have the current going here but we are doing ideal analysis this is In as you recall the operation amplifier because the Input impedance ideally is infinity. We assume that I n current, which is equal to the other current here, the I p current, this is just equal to zero. Okay, we assume the operation amplifier does not draw any current, so you can say here plus zero if you want because of that current is equal to zero. Okay, step number two. You apply nodal analysis at the other node, which is going to be much easier in this case. Vp is just equal to Vi. And you recall our second golden rule of operation amplifier circuits with negative feedback. The first one, remember, the carrots are equal to zero. The second one is that if there is a pathway from the output back to the negative input. In this case, that's the case. Then the operational amplifier tries to adjust Vn so that it's equal to Vp, which in this case is equal to Vi. Okay, that is going to enable you then to substitute the Vn in the previous equation. So we have. Vi divided by Ri plus Vi minus Vo over Rf equal to zero. Well, what we have done here was just this substitution. This is equal to Vi. Okay? Vi. Okay, so we just do basic algebra here. We have Vi divided by Ri plus 
vi divided by rf equals to v output divided by rf. I just basically took this, moved it to the other side of the equation. And with this we have that the output voltage is equal to one plus R F over R I times V input. In this algebraic step, you should have realized that what, what I did was simply to pick R C over here. Actually, let me just do it so that you didn't, in case this is equal to 1 over R I plus 1 over R F times V I. And you multiply this times R F. This R F and that's R F is going to cancel, you get a 1, and then you get R F over R I. Okay, cool. So we have an expression for the output voltage. We can get an expression for the closed loop gain, which is the output over the input for the entire circuit, right? This from here to the output. And what you find is that this 1 plus RF over RI, that's our gain right there for the entire operational amplifier circuit. We see that it, it does not invert, it does not change the phase. <coughs> the output is in phase with the input, it's a non-inverting, there's no negative sign as in the previous case. The area of linear operation is simply going to be one plus RF over RI times the input voltage that being less or equal to the saturation voltage. If you recall, the saturation voltage is going to be to be very close to the power supplies that you can add here. Okay? V plus V minus. You can see it in the data sheet how much less. Again, what happens if you exceed this? Well, you will clip. Um, let's consider here an example where, same example as we did before in the previous problem. If we put a 10k, a 1k here, what is our gain going to be? This is a stem, 11, right? 11 volts. So if our input is one volt, our output is going to be 11 volts. Huh? In phase, in this case. But if our input is two volts, and we have this at 15, plus minus 15, then what we are going to see if this is the 15 or the saturation, we are going to see clipping there. Okay? It's a non nonlinearity. Okay, input impedance. The input impedance in this case you can see that going to the amplifier, right? So if I put here a source, R in is equal to V in divided by my input I P, but IP is zero, therefore the input impedance is infinity. In reality, what is going to be the input impedance of this circuit? The input impedance of the operational amplifier that you are using, which comes in the data sheet. Like 10 to the 6 or whatever. And the output impedance, for the same reasons as in the previous problem, it's going to be equal to zero. meaning 
If we disconnect the input, and then we connect the test source here at the output, what you see, when you use the, ampli the operation amplifier model, is that the voltage control voltage source creates a path to ground. And so it's going to be really the output impedance, yes, the impedance of the operation amplifier, like 75 ohms or so, which ideally is zero.